Real Comic Con. How are you boys and girls doing? I, you sound tired. You sound like you've been here for four days. And some of you got seats, and you're really happy about that. Uh, my name is Mark Bernardin. I am here with the Sci-Fi Wire Gang, and I have with me Mike Reese, the showrunner of The Simpsons. Hello! And the author of Springfield Confidential. Springfield Confidential. So how confidential are you getting? What kind of secrets are you going to tell us in this book? The book, every secret is answered. It's the dirt. It's the secrets of the scandals of The Simpsons. This is the book that's going to get me fired. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you, you've been on the show in, in a couple of different iterations since, what, 1989 or so? 1989. I've been there 30 years. Holy uh, crap. That's it. Nobody's been there longer. I'm not, I always say I'm not the best writer, but I am the oldest one. <laughs> How has making the show changed over that time? It just, uh, you know, it gets harder all the time. It gets harder. We... You know, we've run through the best 650 stories you can tell. So we're, every week we're looking for, oh, what's the 651st best story that we haven't gotten around to? And the show moves faster. It moves much faster all the time. And, uh, and now it's in high def, and we didn't think that would be a big deal, but now we have to fill the background with jokes, too. So <laughs> it's hard, man. So, uh, so how, how do you guys, is it, is it a matter of, of bringing in fresh blood, but how do you keep a show that's been along that, that, that's been on the air that long fresh? Because it feels fresh every week. That's great to hear. It's, uh, you know, The Simpsons is a show sort of based on human stupidity. And the, the dumber and the worse the world gets, the better our show goes. <laughs> and this is not a joke. Uh, November 8th, 2016, Donald Trump was elected. On November 9th, Fox called us and said, you're picked up for two more years. <laughs> he, he really is a job creator. So. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, is, uh, when, when you started on The Simpsons, the public was not really aware what a showrunner was, right? right. It was just a, a writer who worked on a, on a TV show. There's a bunch of names before the credits. And then in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, showrunner became a person that the people were aware of. Is that a good thing? Should we know who you are? I don't think so. I mean, you're looking at me, you're going, oh, I could do that. There's, it's nothing <laughs> special, it's just a hard job. It's a guy who works a lot harder than everybody else. When I ran The Simpsons, I only did it for two years. Uh, in seasons three and four, and I worked 100 hours a week, 50 weeks a year. I gained 70 pounds, on, uh, and I was praying for a heart attack every day because I go, that'll get me a couple of days off from work. And w at the end of my two years, I went to the doctor, and he said, you're morbidly obese. He says, do you know what that is? And I go, that's what Homer is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. At the end of the run of The Simpsons, I weighed 239, which is exactly what Homer weighs. So <laughs> it's a good feeling. Describe for me and, and for them what a day in the life of making The Simpsons look like. The most amazing thing about working at The Simpsons is you're working on a show that's going to be on the air in three days. You're writing last minute jokes and trying to think of new music to stick it. So you're working on a show that's going to be on in three days, and you're working on a show at the same time that'll be on in six months, and you're working on a show that won't be on for a year or 15 months. And so, like, if you ask me what's going to be on the new season, I go, I don't know. I don't know what I'm working on all the time. I know we write, like, the Christmas show in the dead of summer, you know, when it's 110 degrees, and we're trying to think about Christmas stories and a you know, a, a snowplow story. But it's fun, too. That's the other thing. It's fun. I've been doing it for 30 years. I love going into work every day. Except that you don't go into work every day. Well, that's part of it. I, love, <laughs> I only go in one day a week. It's, this is what's sort of nice at The Simpsons, is every writer there only works as much as he thinks he can be fresh and contribute. So some of the young guys still work five days a week. There's a couple of two-day-a-week guys. I work one day a week, and it's been suggested 
I cut back to like an hour a month. So, <laughs> so what inspired you to write a book? What inspired you to get into that? I, so, I got tricked into it. It was a, a journalist named Matt Clickstein came to me and he said, you and me are going to go on a road trip and we're going to see Mike Reese's America and we're going to do a book and it won't have any Simpsons in it at all. And I said, yeah, because my mom always said, take rides from strangers. And we sold that book to HarperCollins, Mike Reese's America with no Simpsons in it. And then the contract came back and it was called, they said, Untitled Simpsons Book. So it was clear they didn't care about my America and they just wanted a Simpsons book. And it was a good thing. I wouldn't have even read Mike Reese's America, but I gave you, a, I, I have all the stuff to tell in uh, the Simpsons book. So what can, what can readers, prospective readers, expect to get in, the, in Simpsons Confidential, Springfield what, Confidential? What I like about the book, again, just because I've seen especially how everything was created, I remember that. So there's, there's something in the first paragraph on page one where it's a joke everybody's been seeing for 30 years and nobody gets it. And even the staff didn't know it's there. It's in the opening credits. So you learn something in the first paragraph. On page three, you'll find out where Springfield is. At the end, I'll answer the age-old question, which is, why are they yellow? Nobody ever thought to ask that. One day, this five-year-old kid said, why are they yellow? And I went back to work. I said, anyone know why they're yellow? And nobody knew. No one. So it took a little detective work, but that's in the book, too. And in between, there's a lot of dish. There's a lot of gossip about our 800 celebrity guests and uh, how we make the show. But it's fun. It's all fun. In the in the 30 years since you've been on The Simpsons, how have you have you noticed humor in America change? And looking back on some of those episodes, how does it feel with the benefit of hindsight? Well, it was, I was just discussing with a guy. Uh, you know, when the show in its second season, we went up against Cosby. Cosby was the real wholesome show, and everyone thought, well, someday Bart will be in jail, but it turned out the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. It's a, the most amazing thing <laughs> about the show is when it came on the air, it was considered the most shocking thing in the world, and we were condemned by the National Council of Churches, right? Two years ago, The Simpsons was endorsed by the Pope. The Pope said, I love The Simpsons. It's the most Christian show on television. So, any of you who can see me know it's not all that Christian. So, uh, so, so we're here in, in New York Comic Con, which feels like ground zero for collectors. Do you collect anything? I don't collect a thing. I... What, who are you then? What's the point? of living if you can't amass stuff. Well, that's it. You know, I'm like a lot of people here. I live in a New York apartment. It's a little smaller than this, and uh, I don't have room for stuff. I don't know how they fit all this stuff in. Wow, I just broke the, uh, the Well, decor. I mean, we're, we're at the end of it, man. We can just tear this apart. All that's right. <laughs> nice job. Rock and roll. Okay. <laughs> what, have, what have you learned about storytelling? over that time, the, the, the years you've been on The Simpsons. What, what new we, things have you learned about it? The big thing we learned is, you know, when The Simpsons came on in 1989, TV was so slow. I mean, not to pick on Cosby again. It was the number one show on TV. It was a great show, but nothing happened. The Cosby show looked like this. It was just a couple of people sitting on a couch, and they just chatted, and nothing happened. <laughs> And in 1989, the fastest paced show on TV was The Golden Girls, which is, you know, which is a show about three corpses and a mummy. And, <laughs> and, and so, so when we started making The Simpsons, we thought nobody was going to watch it. We had no faith anyone was going to see it. So we said, well, let's just pack it with stuff. It, it doesn't have to be good, but at least let's make it move fast. And, we sort of up, up the pace of TV. Now all the TV moves really fast. And there are shows, you know, like uh, Rick and Morty. It's like, wow, what the hell just happened? I can't keep up with them. And 
This is, I think, is what Simpsons did to television. I, uh, I feel like we should get Steve Gutenberg's agent on the phone to sell him on three corpses and a mummy. <laughs> Maybe we can make, we can make some money. <laughs> uh, so when, when does the book drop? When does it come out? When can people get book their hands on it? It's coming out three months ago. Thanks for hey! staying on top of it. It's, awesome. Uh, it came out three months ago, but it's just selling and selling. We, we sold out here at Comic-Con. We sold every copy. I was supposed to hold up a copy, but I said, I could hold it up or I could sell it. So I sold it. It looks like this, kind of. It's got a blue background and a yellow zigzag on top. And it's not really Bart. I didn't get the rights to use Bart on the cover, so I say it's just a yellow zigzag and a blue background. But uh, well the done. book has been selling out. The fans are happy, and that's what makes me really happy, because you guys are so hard to please. <laughs> You guys are so mean. Just because we put out, you know, a decade of bad shows in a row, you turn on us. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have you enjoyed listening to Mr. Mike Reese? Thank you, Author, everybody. Springfield Confidential. Buy my book. Sci-Fi Wire, book. it's a fan thing. Hashtag. <laughs> Up next, Gotham Cast Interview. Thanks, everybody. I'm not leaving. Hey. <laughs> I'm Jackie Jennings with Sci-Fi Wire. If you can't get enough of New York Comic Con, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel for news, interviews, cosplay, and so much more. What are you waiting for?